Hello students, in this video I'm going to take you through the algorithm for Newton's method. Um, we're going to just code it up together. So first I'm going to define a function, I'm going to call it the lambda function, and um, I've already fired up the uh, numpy and my matplotlib and made the matplotlib inline. So um, if you have this Jupyter Notebook, I would uh, suggest that you um, load it and then follow along with this video. Um, we'll do some live coding together. Okay, so um, we can define functions in a, f a couple different ways in Python. Um, if I just have a quick function like this, I'm going to use this thing called the lambda function. The, you can see what you can just look at it and see what the notation uh, looks like. All right, and then I'm going to plot this function. And notice that we're looking for the zeros, so. Um, we're not going to find this. We're going to find this minimum as well. I'll use Newton's method for that. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to locate this zero on the left and the zero on the right. Okay, so let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to code up Newton's method. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. All right. So <clears throat> um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function this way. I'm going to call it Newton. Now let's see. What am I going to need? I'm going to need uh, an initial guess. I'm going to need a function. I'm going to need the derivative of that function. So I'll call those func and defunc. These inputs will be this f and df. Uh, you can also you know, create a dg, a, a g and dg if you wanted to, and make those different functions if you wanted to find um, the zeros for those functions. And then you would just, when you uh, call this uh, Newton function that I'm doing here, I'm going to call it here. Um, you would just call it with whatever name of the function you want. In this case, I'm calling it f and df. All right, so you can see that my initial guess is going to be 4, so that would put me here, and then hopefully I converge to the root 5. <clears throat> so I'm um, putting that in, and then I'm going to put in a tolerance, and I'm actually going to put a bumper in. I don't want my iterations to go above 10. This will be, def this will be defaulted to 10. You could, you could input... When you call Newton's method, you can say, well, I want my iterations to go up to 20, and that would override this 10 here. But for this experiment, I'm just going to leave it at 10. Okay, so that's going to be the inputs for my function. And then let's initialize my iteration and my error, my iteration error, actually. And I'll start at 0, and then I want this, I want Newton's, I want the while loop I'm going to create to fail. So I'm going to make it some immense number like one and maybe I'll just add the tolerance to that. I'm going to store my iteration errors in a in an array and um, okay let's start the algorithm. So while the floating point absolute value of the iteration error is greater than the tolerance and my iterations are less than my bumper and max I'm going to do the following thing. Uh, I'm going to compute my iteration error. Now remember, the iteration error from the previous video is the function evaluated at my guess divided by the derivative of the function. Then I'm going to store that error, that iteration error. I'm going to actually store the absolute value of that right there. Yep, OK. And then my next guess, now here comes Newton's method. It's going to be the previous guess minus the iteration error. Now, not the absolute value of the iteration error. Notice that it's this thing here that I've created. So in my previous video, that was the a to sub k. Now, I can remember with Python, I can collapse this to minus equals like that. And then. I'm going to increase my iteration by one. Now, this um, is actually going to make my iteration count one more than it needs to be um, when I return my arguments. So I'm going to return the um, iteration error. I'm going to return my iteration count, and I'm going to return the number of roots. That's the order I'm going to have them in. So evac iterations and the root. Okay, and that should be Newton's method. And now 
let's run it with an initial guess of four and let's see how well it does. Okay, so the root is five, which is clearly wrong after five iterations. Oh, nope, the, the root is five. Yes, I'm sorry. I was looking at the minimum three. Yeah, the root is five. There it is. So the four converts to five after five iterations. And look at that error, 10 to the minus 15th. And you can see that after five iterations, uh, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration. So you started out at 10 to the minus one roughly, then it went to roughly 10 to the minus two times a constant, then 10 to the minus four, 10 to the minus eight, 10 to the minus 16th. That's that quadratic convergence you're seeing with the log of the error, iteration error um, that we expect from Newton's method. Okay, and if I put in, um, let's say two, if I go to the left, um, yeah, about here, I should expect it to converge to one. And sure enough, yep, the root is 0 0.999999. Uh, it's errors 10 to the minus 15th. And again, we see the quadratic convergence that we expect from Newton's method. Okay, so that's Newton's method uh, coded up in a nutshell. Um, sometimes you're going to notice that uh, because if you take a log, a semi-log of the error here, um, you'll get some holes in your graph, um, or you might get a division by, or you might get a logarithm of zero. If that happens, there's a little hack you can do. You can add um, the finfo float dot apps. You can add the machine zero um, and broadcast it across your error function um, so that you don't get that. Um, that junk um, in your log plot and it doesn't change your results substantially. Um, it's not, it, it just makes your, your plots look good. Um, it's a bit of a hack, but it works. Okay, that's Newton's method.